you were just checking if you're doing well. I mean, I said, oh, what? What do you think happened? Like, something happened? And, like, I have to start asking, like, did, did I miss something? Like, what happened? I really just don't know. <laughs> I really just don't know. Um, so, I don't see half of it. One. And two... Um, and two, I also disassociate myself from whatever negative comments I do see. I know they're not talking about me because it's just not me. Like the person who they make up and I talk about, I know me. Like that's not true. So if you insist that somebody that they will do that, somebody that they will think that, and them have my name, I'm also next one because I know me. It's not me talking to. I'm becoming accept says Kia me talking to. It don't bother me. Because I know who I am. Um Tassie, yes, this is Good Gas Mondays. Welcome if you welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, okay. This question here. How to forgive a relative who continues to treat you bad? So there's a whole forgiveness mechanism, right? And it's not something I can just tell you in a live. And it's not something you can do one time and it work either. It's a process. But I'll tell you the principle behind it. Forgiveness is something that you do for yourself. One of the things my mother taught me when I was a teenager. You know when you're a teenager, you take everything personal. Everything get up into... God, in Jamaica we call it your craw. It get up into my craw, right? I'm just annoyed as a teenager. How do you say that? I'm vexed, I'm disappointed, like... My malice you because you shouldn't do it. And she she would say to me, you know, that takes a lot of energy, you know, from you to malice somebody. Because you have to remember that you're mad at them every time you see them. Like you could be in the middle of a happy moment and when them come, you have to start frowns and make up a face and make them know say, Yeah, me not like you. I may carry some energy against you. Yeah. You have to really interrupt your flow to remember that you're angry at that person. To manifest that anger. To show them in order to make them uncomfortable. So they know that they are not forgiven. Why do you want to invest so much time in somebody else? Like why do you want to carry that weight on that baggage? And since she taught me that as a teenager. Like I've taken that lesson to heart. I've taken it to heart. But not a time for Malaysia. If you've done me something that I think is dishonorable. Unfortunate. Unkind. I'm going to forgive you. Because I'm not going to walk around with that in my, my spirit. That's not my burn to bear. Make your conscience be your guide. I did what I had to do to show respect, to show love, etc. Um, so in your case where you say you have a relative who treats you bad, I'm assuming that you don't treat them bad in return. Like you are good, you're vulnerable, you show up for them, you're kind. Um, but they're not returning your kindness with kindness. Don't change who you are because of who other people are. That's the first rule. So don't make them make you into who you're not or who you're not comfortable being. And two, remember that forgiveness is not for them. It's not for them, you know. It's for you. For you to be able to calmly, peacefully exist in life around other people. So that's the principle of forgiveness. And so you'll never run out of forgiveness. Understanding that it's something you're giving to somebody. Yeah? You know, you're forgiving. But it's also something to release the weight and the energy from your spirit, that negative vibe from your spirit. So forgiveness makes your burden lighter. So unless you don't want a lighter burden, then don't forgive. But as long as you want greater ease and peace in life, um, the principle is to forgive as often and as completely as you can. Because animosity and anger and unforgiveness doesn't change the person. Um, doesn't change the person. It just makes it just gives you another burden to carry. Guys, I was swiping away and actually swiped off the screen. All right, let me go way down to the bottom because there's some persons who asked questions earlier. Um, seeing a question here about whether it will be available after. Yes, we will post it after. Um, all right. This question here about self-help help books that I would recommend reading through the valley. Um, it's actually a devotional that I'm going to recommend. It's written by Ian La Van Zandt and it's called Until Today. I remember in 2018, 
that was my morning devotional for the whole year so there's a lesson there for every day of the year and it's themed so the sections the months have a different theme so one month is actually forgiveness um so depending on what it is you're going through you can liter literally flip through to a month one of the 12 months and it will have a theme related to your personal emotional health and well-being and i found that book to be very helpful i still have it in fact in 2020 i went back to it as a morning devotional um not using it this year but i still have it so it's one of those books that just don't get old for me and it's something that you can be using consistently for 365 days of the year excuse me so i would recommend that book ian lavanzant until today i got it on amazon Um, hi, I seen a message here from Sandra. Yes, I am live every Monday. All right, I think this is going to be the last question that I, I tackle. I did say 10 minutes and we're at 8.15. All right, I'm going to take two more. Okay, so this is one. How do you handle someone who is close to you but just constantly spits negative lyrics about you? Cut it off. All right. And it's not as easy as me saying cut it off because I don't know how close the person is in the nature of the relationship, um, who they are to you, whether somebody can truly cut off or you will have to interact with them regularly. I don't know. But limit your interactions with them. First rule is don't share anything intimate and personal with them. You can't trust them to keep your business to themselves. Right? So that's the first thing. Don't put them in a position to harm you with important and sensitive information. Not share nothing with them. No matter how much you forgive them, you can't keep putting yourself at risk like that. So that's the person that you're not going to call when you're having a difficulty. When they call and ask you, hey, I'm just checking in. How are things? Are you okay? Is there anything I can help you with? Anything to stressing you out today? No, I'm blessed. The Lord has showed up for me in so many ways. I've laid everything at um, the cross um, in, in prayer. And I'm just waiting on the resolution because while I pray like it depends on God, I'm here working like it depends on me. So I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you? Right, you know, I'm not for sure. You know, I have no sad story for sure. Mm. You take that to the Lord in prayer or to somebody you can actually trust. So that's the first thing. Draw the line. No sensitive information. Um, two, you don't have to spend time around them just to prove that you are the bigger person. A lot of us put ourselves in those situations, like you're trying to hang around people who are toxic, unhealthy, who you know don't mean you any good. When you turn your back, they're talk about you, but just so that it don't look bad to other people, you stay. When them enter the chat, you don't exit the chat, right? And you sit down, somebody have drinks and they come, you sit down there and go and drink the same way. No man, you have to draw the line. Energy carries. So you can't be sitting in that space with the energy constantly being pushed, pushed on you. You're going to make yourself uncomfortable. Just to prove to people that you're not uncomfortable. No, man, when you're uncomfortable, you're uncomfortable. And say, peace be with you. You know, the, the mood in this room and the vibe in this room just changed. A medium, protect my energy, protect my peace, protect my space. So, may the lift up you now. Bless up. WhatsApp me. May I will talk here? Whoever it is you did not talk to before the mood in the room change. So, you have to draw those lines now in terms of the information that you share with them, one, and the physical space that you share with them. If there's any other reason that you guys might interact, like by buck up or accidentally, um, know who you are. What are your values? That's the first thing I'm going to say now. Know who you are and what are your values? How do you treat people? And even in circumstances where people don't treat you well, what are your values about how you treat people who don't treat you well? Because if you have a value that says, even when people don't treat me well, I will be respectful. Because I respect clothes me put on a daytime. Remember that when you see them. Don't not be who you say you are and don't value the thing that you say you value. Or discard the value you say you have. Because in that moment you're angry and you don't like this person. Just remember who you are and don't allow them to change you. Because that's what you're going to re re regret. You ever make somebody draw you out yet? And them say something to you and you just dip up. <laughs> if you're Jamaican you know what it means to dip up, right? And when you dip up and you finish and you finish them off like go cool. Right? And then you say, Whoa, that's not me. I feel so bad. I can't believe I said that. I'm ashamed of myself. Then people hear me. I said that. How make that come out of my mouth? Embarrass your own self just because you allow them to trigger you and abandon your values momentarily. Don't give anybody that power and that control. So limit the conversations and the, the, the type of information you share with them. Um, 
as best as you can stay out of their way and out of their space and when you do interact with them just remember your values and don't change yourself in order to prove anything to anybody or to settle the score or balance the the score be who you are and honor the values that you have does it stop them from doing the dishonorable thing and being negative towards you no that's not a guarantee but our job in life is not to manage others it's to manage ourselves it's not to create peace in others it's to create peace in ourselves is not to make others mature, is to mature in ourselves, to grow in ourselves. We have one thing where we can be responsible for in our life, and that is ourselves and our choices. So let us not get too focused on how to handle others. Others have to handle themselves. My job is to handle me. How do I manage me in these moments? And it really all comes back down to the values that you hold there. So I hope that was um, helpful. Roshana, I think I said I was going to take two more after this, right? Jesus, I see one. I see a question here. So I think I may have to respond to this one in a DM because that one here looks spicy. Oh, repeating the name of the book. It's Until Today by Ianla Van Zandt. Um, a recommendation here from somebody that I write a book. I actually have written a book. <laughs> um, I wrote a book in 2018 titled Kill Fear, The Art of Courageous Living. It's available on Amazon and there are a few copies available in Mega Mart stores right across Jamaica. But anywhere you are in the world, you can actually order it right now on Amazon. Um, Kill Fear by Crystal Tomlinson. So yeah, have a read. There are some interesting perspectives in that book and... One of the points I wrote about in the book I actually shared on the live, which is the power of self-definition. You have to know who you are. You have to put on your clothes before you come on road and people try to put on clothes for you. You have to know who you are. And understanding yourself and defining yourself for yourself saves you a lot of grief and a lot of anxiety. Um, because nobody can tell you who you be. And, and that's the thing, you know, people get power from saying, yeah, man, if me do this and do that, that them are going to do this. Mm -mm, can't press my button. I know who I am. <laughs> and I have very specific triggers and people calling me names is not one of them um, all right I'm trying to pick two I'm Olivia asking if I have a podcast. Yes, I do. It's actually titled Good Gas Mondays. You can find it on uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, um, anywhere podcasts are available. Good Gas Mondays is actually there as well. All right, so penultimate questions. I'll take this one and one more. How do you handle a coworker? who's malicing you for something you're not aware of. We're going to handle it like adults. <coughs> We're going to handle it like adults. So if it's a situation where we need to have lunch together, where I need to pop over by your desk and say, hey, can I have two minutes to talk to you about something important? Putting on my big girl pants, right? Putting on my big girl voice, looking at you with my big girl face. We have to talk about something and we're adults in this room. So let's just lay the cards on the table. Do you have five minutes? I want to um, share something with you or pick your brain on something. Them say yes, okay, let's move. But the first thing is you have to have permission. If you're gonna handle the issue and work it out as adults, both both persons have to be willing to work it out. Um, so assuming that they say yes, you just go straight for it, you know. Um, somebody made me aware of something and I just want to be transparent and have this conversation with you because I think it's the mature thing to do. Is there something that I may have done to offend you that I'm not aware of that I could perhaps apologize for, make amends for, or clarify. Um, and give them the opportunity to be honest. If they're honest with you, you can clarify and you take the steps from there, depending on what it is. If they choose not to be honest with you, which some people will just pretend like, I don't know nothing. Me, no say here, say me, mm -mm. No, not me, mm -mm. No, 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 tell you so, mm, -mm. Lie, lie, lie. Me, my good, my good. But not bad for nothing. There are some people who will not be honest with you. But you have an opportunity to open the door to honesty. Let them know that I'm here to 
have this honest mature conversation it may be a difficult and uncomfortable one but i think that's what adults do adults have uncomfortable conversations um, with a sense of maturity and honesty so here i am asking if there's anything you'd like to say to me ask me um correct me about maybe a misunderstanding so we can sort it out if them say yes proceed if them say no yes say okay no problem but i just thought um it was sensible for me to not use hearsay and judge you so i was giving you an opportunity to share to my face anything that you might have been concerned about if you recall what the situation is or feel comfortable at a point in the future to talk to me please feel free i'm always open for a one-on-one -on -one conversation because i just think that's what adults do we, we deal with things up front so if you're ever ready to talk about it i'm i'm here to talk about it with you but give them the opportunity to be honest hopefully they take it not everybody will take it some of them will pretend like nothing don't happen um, and the last question here is from Kim Grizzle. If we're still registering for the masterclass. Yes, we are. We actually close off registration on um, January 31, which is next week, Sunday. So go ahead and click the link in my bio to register. For anybody who is not sure what that is about, for the next 12 months, I'm leading a mastermind class, which is really dedicated to people who have some goals that they're tired of putting off and need an accountable community to keep them focused and push them towards getting it. The first month, January, we've spent looking at the emotional state that we all need to be in if we're going to stay committed to our goals. So we did a whole um, seven day self-love challenge because a lot of us simply don't love ourselves enough to set goals that inspire us and to fight for those goals even when it gets difficult. Um, we went through an entire life audit process to look through um, eight key areas of your life to see what it really look like. Sometimes you think you have an awful life, but you have a good life. Sometimes you think you have a great life, but there are some key things that really drive happiness and well-being and peace and purpose that are missing. So we did a comprehensive life audit with every single member. Um, and once the audit is done, you get to see where the gaps are. So where do you need to be improving on personal and intimate relationships? Where do you need to be improving on service to community? Where you need to be improving on self-care, sleep, what you're eating, water, what you're, what you're reading, things like that. Um, what work do you really need to do on your whole self, right? So one of my philosophies is we don't, we don't do vision board until we're clear about what, what the life is that we have. Right, because a lot of people are just like, oh, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. Pick that care, pick that house there. Okay, but what is the life that you have? Who are you now? And what is the life that you're willing to work for? Because let's be honest, if you're not willing to work for the vision, nobody put the house up there. Say you live in Hawaii, right? You have somebody when I like travel, you love their Jamaica, you love can go country, right? You love can get your aki and your banana and your yam, and you tell me say you want to live at Paris. You sure say that you really want? Let's think about it. Don't just put it on there because everybody put the Eiffel Tower up on the vision board. What do you want? You're afraid of playing you're afraid of it. You don't like travel. And you have three different countries on the vision board. Where you have it there for? You know you don't like travel. You's a road trip kind of person who want to drive by some place. And maybe a blue mountain need for there. You understand? Maybe a lamb key need for there. You take a boat and go over there. So the, the goal is to focus on the life that you want. The life that's going to make you happy. Not the one where you look good to other people. Your life. Your perfect life. Not the perfect magazine one where everybody wants. And that, or everybody says they want. And that takes time. It takes radical honesty. It takes a lot of self-compassion to go through some key part of your life and talk the truth. Like, what is strong here? So what is weak here? So am I doing this? Am I not doing this? Where have I fallen short? That life audit don't give you room for blame nobody. Is yourself. And then after we look fully at your life, um, then we decide where the gaps are, right? Because you tell by yourself, you, know, you tell the truth by yourself. Where are the gaps and what key actions do you need to take? So um, last night we went through a battle board session now to convert those big, broad actions and big, bold goals into tactical steps and strategies, crunching and breaking them down into literal seven day blocks to make sure that by the end of 2021, December 31, 2021 is a different person. When you look back at your life and do back that audit at the end of 2021, mind blown. You're just like, whoa. I missed up the thing I saw. Last year, I gave myself a five. And right now, I want eight. Why? Because you had some tactics, some critical strategic steps where you take to improve the parts where you found the gap. Um, and then a community that kept you accountable. So you never just do it in a January when it's cool. Or do it in a February. Or stop in a March. But you were consistent right throughout the year. 
Um, so that's those are some of the things that we're doing inside our mastermind. If you click the link in my bio right now, it's the first link on the link tree. Um, you can go ahead um, and register. We close off registration on January 31. So if you are tired of setting the goals and not meeting them, if you're tired of giving up in the middle because you don't have the energy, you don't have anybody to inspire and encourage you, you feel like you're going it alone, you're not clear on what goals you even want, like you sit down looking at your life and you just don't know where to go, left, right, Miggle, stop forward back you don't know this life audit especially will help you to get clear on that so it answers a lot of questions that you might have about where you're supposed to do where you want what is purposeful what is worth your time and then we're backing that up with a lot of emotional tools so like i share with you um a valley toolkit there are a lot of things to help you deal with failure deal with rejection and disappointment um and just all the range of emotions that tend to derail us when we think we have it and then the vibe change and then we know about to do it again. So we want to make sure that you have all the tools, all the tools possible, emotional, tactical, strategic, every tool, as well as the community of accountability. Um, so on this weekend, weekend coming, we're going to be assigning accountability partners. So you will actually, if you choose, you'll have one person who you are accountable to, another gladiator who you lean in on. Um, and allow them to stimulate and motivate you. So we do weekly check-ins as well to see how the body board process is going. We'll also have monthly check-ins and trainings. And then we'll have a um, quarterly session. We'll have a half-year check-in. So it's literally a community and a family that is working towards clear goals. No room for excuses. We believe in you. So we're not going to allow you to excuse yourself out of your own life. So we're going to stay on you like white on rice. To make sure I say, you do the things that you want to do. Because that is what's going to give you the sense, sense of fulfillment. But it really works because we do that life audit at the beginning. So we know where you really, really want. Not the thing where you cut out of the magazine and put on the board because everybody has that on the board. The beach and the, the dumbbell, right? And the big van and the big house. Like, if that's not what, you're, what you want, it's okay. Look at your life. Like, what makes you happy? What really would make you happy? I make you want to get up and show up for your life every day. That's what we want to help you find. And when you find it, we stay with you for the next 12 months to get you on the path um, to achieving that. So click the link in my bio. I really hope um, Kim is still on to see the answer to that. And anybody else who is interested, you have to be goal focused though. Like you, you have to want something. Like in yourself, you have to want something. Um, we can't make you want more. You have to want the more. And it will help you to find and distill what that is. Um, that you're working on based on what your life is telling you and provide you the systems to get there. So hoping to see more uh, more persons registered. I think I have one more one more. Oh, Nice Morris is asking the cost for the masterclass or mastermind is actually a subscription program. So you would pay monthly um, to access the, the tools monthly. So the cost per month is 39 US dollars. I'm not sure what that converts to in Jamaican today and at this moment, not sure what it converts to, to pound or to Canadian. But on the platform, it's 39 US dollars. Um, and then that's a monthly subscription fee. So as long as you're inside the community, um, you're able to unlock monthly tools as we go along um, month by month. Ochi, I don't have any books in Ochi yet. Somebody's asking about Kill Fear in Ochi. Ah. And somebody's asking about the audio book. Okay, so yes, we did re record the audio book. Um, I need to go back and check that third party team that Audible slash Amazon uses. Um, the last email I got from them, you know that standard Corona email where they said, boy, you know, we're stretched with a lot of people and it's taking us a lot of time to review the audio and approve it. So I'm going to do a check-in with them on that. I recorded it. I had so much fun recording it. Recorded it right here in Jamaica. Yes. All right. How do I stay so positive when people slander me so much? So I think I answered this question already, but in case you, you hadn't seen it, Gina, I'm just seeing this question. Um, one, it comes from not seeing all of what people have, have to say. I don't go digging for disrespect. I don't go digging for lies. I don't go digging to say, yeah, what am I going to say? Oh, but people's opinions don't matter to me. I will not go digging and searching for them. It's not that important. Hey, you're not here, what am I? I'm mm -mm, not here, but I'm not want here. Why would I care? Like, the fact that they're interested in me is great. That don't mean that me have interested in a with them officer about me. 
you know so I, I'm, I don't have that level of curiosity where i need to know what everybody's saying about me because you know hey hey you're trying to say because guess what i have no intention of running your door to change your mind so we can't interest it. It's not like I have a goal. Like once I see what you have to say, then I have to debate with you. I make sure you change your mind. I make can't make people see that. I make it stay there because then people are going to think they're true. Anybody who wants to think that the lies are true will think that they're true anyway. If you did want to know if it's true or not, you could have kind of hop over to my page and see if there's anything in my space that corroborates what they're saying over there saying their space. But, I mean, I, I just generally not interested in whether like on my list of things to do at daytime is not make sure that people like me that's that's not one of the goals so i'm not searching for the opinions to see like oh who don't like me what i'm saying why i'm saying that mm -hmm. um and then finally self-definition which i said that like so many times i define myself i know who i am so sometimes i'm a talk about somebody and then think i meet them i talk about is not me because I'm not that person. When you make up that person there, I mean, I'm going to be with you, know? But the fake person want to make up. Enjoy yourself at your soap opera because that's not me. And I'm comfortable being misunderstood. I'm okay with that. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Some people genuinely choose to misunderstand me. And some people just decide to not like me. That is okay. That is okay. You don't have to be fair in assessing me. The only person who has that duty by law is a judge or a jury of my peers if me ever got caught for one case like that's it so um that's it for our live today i can't take any more questions because i'm like well over the 8 30 mark <laughs> um and i try to make good guest mondays like a one hour session and i'm now at an hour and a half so guys i'll post this one on my page and you'll be able to watch it over um, thank you guys for participating. I appreciate you staying on for as long as you did. And I guess I'll just use this mechanism in the future, which is the no comments thing. And just allow people to ask questions because that's like safe. It keeps everybody focused, right? And we don't get distracted reading some of the madness. So I'll, I'll try this moving forward for the, the Good Gas Monday lives. But thank you guys so much. Um, remember, we do have our Good Gas Mondays podcast that's available anywhere you get your podcast. So you can actually hop on right now and listen to a few of my ggm episodes um and reiterating that my book is still available on amazon a couple of people asked me about the book um it is available on amazon kill fear the art of courageous living by crystal tomlinson and the audio we're going to give you an update on that in the community when the audio book is going to be available um but we just have to work with a third party team that's managing the upload of the audio to get it on audible so as soon as we have an update on that we'll share it in the community but thank you guys so very much for being a part of our good guest mondays tonight i hope you enjoyed it and i hope those nuggets from my valley toolkit have served you well remember to enjoy the stillness in the valley listen to your life and what it's trying to teach you be clear on who you are so that the valley doesn't change you or lie to you about who you really are because when things get tough one of the first things we start to do is doubt ourselves and our worthiness and then finally making sure that you treat yourself well, even as you're going through difficult times. Take care of you. Be compassionate to you. Surround yourself with people who will be compassionate to you because you have to love yourself enough to do the work required to get out of the valley. If you hate yourself, you don't really exit the valley. If you hate yourself, you can't heal. If you hate yourself, you can't grow, you can't thrive. So learn to be compassionate and kind to you. And if you feel like you can't find the kindness in yourself, at least surround yourself with those who will be kind and loving and supportive and compassionate when you can't find it in yourself. All right, guys, lots of love, blessings. And again, thank you so much for tuning in this week. Bless up. <laughs>